Stay there. <laughs> okay, our next performer is um, somebody who's been at Dodo a few times before. Um, she's uh, a very fine poet. Um, she's also training to be a counsellor, so another um, strand to her bow, as it were. But she's merging back into the poetry scene after about um, a year and a half of uh, bringing a new baby into the world. So she's out now to uh, give us the benefit of her wisdom, her poetry, and her emergence back into the poetry world. So please welcome the wonderful Lisa Hitchin. Thank you, Patrick, for giving me the opportunity to read. And... Um, Thank you to everyone for coming. Uh, the first poem I'm going to read is um, about this man. It's very much in the news this week, very much in my thoughts, in the thoughts of a lot of people all around the world. And I wanted to write a poem about him. I've been listening to everything, all the news, and all the things I was writing were just cliche. So I decided I'd um, go for a walk to local park. I live in Lewisham. And part of the park is actually a peace garden called the Tutu Peace Garden. And amazingly, it was Desmond Tutu that opened this garden. Because he used to live in, in this part of Lewisham. And he was invited back 41 years later to open this little tiny garden in a little tiny corner of Chimbrook Meadows. So I took my daughter there this week and wrote something about this great man and here it is. Tutu Peace Garden. I enter this place with my own willow sapling. She perches on the filigree of the peace seat, considers the powder sky, meanders to the swings. Days before was the passing of your friend Mediba. Here is the place to remember him. On the edge he stood as this slim beech tree, with bow strong arms made work, made trouble, made a space for peace. Whilst the flow of conflict lies either side, I can sit here, safe, inside the flowers of his hands. The shaggy ewes are the people that joined up, planted themselves in the tide of danger. Together he and them and you push the ground a little further for equality. Champagne grasses rustle their strength. Inside those 27 years took some bending. Outside there was no break, no fall, much more work to be done. For himself, he left behind the bindweed of hate. In this example, he bloomed forgiveness, sent out its pollen to his people, to the world. Then he dug and weeded, worked the white soil, planted the colours for his rainbow nation. This was not one in war, but through charm, through attacking the system, not the man. He lived his values without compromise, Greeting souls, never their status. Transcending icon god or Jedi knight to dance in batik shirts with children, daily make his bed wherever he slept and laugh long and loud with life. Mandela is here, in Chimbrook Meadows, in Grove Park, in Lewisham. He hands me a packet of seeds. The blooms promised a courage of forgiveness, just as his daughter sows her father's wisdom, I must too. Can it be done? Let's see. May this daughter grow fair, fearless, as forgiving as he. This is another poem about captivity captive horse in a salt mine in Krakow or near Krakow in Poland, the Waleczka salt mine. It's a really beautiful place. Is that you've been there? <laughs> no, I haven't, but I, I just really enjoyed your last time. So. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this horse, Bashka, 
was um, the last horse to be mining there. And in 2002, she returned to the surface after 11 years of working in the dark. This is a poem about Bashka. Bashka, the last horse of the Velechka salt mine. I couldn't see for daylight. Sky everywhere. It hurt my eyes. The ground was warm and stretched out. I had forgotten what distance was. Not like the mine where I kept to myself, knowing when the breath of me measured to those lingering walls. Rich with muscle when I went down. That's why they want you, Bashka, said Khrushchev, laughing. I slapped to my flanks. Funeral songs carried the miner's descent. One might have carried mine. My fear took out Marek's shoulder, carved its name on the soft stone. Yadviga cried, for I would not go easily to the place where no beast came back. But time sinks too, and soon I forgot the openness of light. I took my passage through the ghosts of this dried up sea. How its chill carried the miners' songs far below St Kinga's Chapel. Their prayers wound deep into my ears, my siren call to sleep. My stable was six by twelve feet. I worked in circles of not much more, harnessed to the turn for that mineral, for its climb up, up, up to a world that I would never see. Except I'm here now, back to a hero's welcome in a land I barely know. I wheeze through the parched oats, this dusty cage of hay. Shut my eyes to the stabbing hours of a spotlight sun, but it is jabbing in, blinding my dark, my six by twelve feet. The soothing breath of brine, the smooth groan on that rock where my muzzle lay. Freedom has its price. This is a poem about social workers and uh, one aspect of their work. <clears throat> I'll just explain a bit about it so it's clear. People are claiming to be under 18 seeking asylum sometimes have their age disputed by the Home Office. And when this happens, social workers have to carry out age assessments to determine that indiv individual's age. So um, this is a dramatised version of what actually happens. A social worker's dilemma. Turn around, I say. I'm staring now, not at your back, but into the system. I am here to play God for all the remnants of skills I have. But it is not skills, it is chance. A guessing game to work out if you are really under 18, based on how you look, how I feel. You face me now with a face that might have seen it all. An old soul? Still, you can be born that way. Despite facial hair and wisdom teeth, be a child still according to our laws. Or the traffickers might have taught you to play this game. What to say, what not to say. Either way, all you have done is taken a boot scuff path from Afghanistan to this well-cushioned land. I look again before I decide. I don't want to tell, I want to tell you, I want to say, I don't blame you for working the system. Who wouldn't elastic, elasticate the truth for a grasp at a better life? Today you tried and it didn't work. You'll be sent back. And tomorrow, I'll be here again. Year when we've all got colds, and um, a few years ago I had an accident. I was knocked off my bike without a helmet, and I lost my sense of smell. So, just had a massive cold, and I lost my sense of smell again. So, I thought I'll read this poem as I've been in this place once more. Missing. A fifth of me is gone, walked out. Smell the most powerful and subtle sense of all. Walloping stink or tiniest perfume, don't word stir stir anything. Washing flung across the house is sweat wet but absent. 
your body, your face, your mouth hold their warmth and texture but don't carry you with triple thrill to my brain. Eating is the bare preserve of tongue with its restricting palate. I provoke nasal workout. Vacuum up rows in my nose, slice onion, sniff cat food. There's no response. Only a sense of what I knew. The absence of a lifetime friend that gave me colour warning of bad foods, fumbled farts, of who not to fuck. The sharpest and richest gift made me chocolate tender, radared for rotten breath, or the lust of orange cardamom. Tea is for the scent addict. Its easel of spices bound to a cup. It's nothing to me now. Healing will take striking nasal engines back to work. I must wait. <coughs> and this next poem is also about captivity. I think it's a bit of a theme going on. Boundaries and growing up, <laughs> creating space. Gathering daylight. I gather daylight in the small hours. Into a bag it goes, in pieces. Uncertain, but clean as ginger, the first I've got. Later I'll spread it out, leave it to lie or to wander. These pieces vibrate colour. Security. I breathe them in. daylight now fills my bag. It fills the space between us. Once I spread my pieces for you to unpick. But the edges turned dark, disappeared. In the end I couldn't see my own way. You left sodden badges on my bag. Now they're gone. And when you're around always keep a hand on its neck. <laughs> and this is um, a poem inspired by, by my counselling course, really. A student on my previous courses has written a book, No More Silence, David Whelan is the guy that wrote it, about his life in a Scottish care home. And... Um, it's really about when families don't work out, people are taken into care and consequences that can have. And so this was part of his experience when he was in a home called Quarriers in the 70s. A Quarriers boy. The first time was after she had gone. His sister, his human shield. He's 13, a small skinny boy in a care home. The door is opening. The beast comes in. Thin candlewick cloth of cottage seven, nose to bed deep. The hairs on his arms and those vast warm hands. It is not the crushing thump on his body or the muffle in his eardrums burst from the beatings. But the words, your ma never wanted you. And the cloying silver crin that kept its place inside the beast's sprawling hair inside the savage memory that is smell. <laughs> smell appearing again. This is a happier, more visual poem to finish on. Stamp collecting for my father-in-law. I see him now with those stamps, peering with tweezers and hot water over their travel-torn faces. Gently, he releases each pimpled visa from its papery frame. It is because they are used, he collects them. Shiny new stamps don't appeal as those that have voyaged the perils of every mail system. Shunted from hand to machine, felt sun in the tropics, frostbite in Russia. Then to the slash of the post box. To be franked is to be worthy of a place in his collection. One day we look at photos. I point to me aged eight. People say I look the same. But there's no nostalgia for some bygone age. You're older, he simply says. 
The words press down on my page and I like it. To be a you stamp and so loved is worth being. And I can live truly with the crinkles of my journey. As we kiss goodbye to the lips in the Dutch way, I know why I chose his son. Thank you. moving set of poems from Lisa, so please more applause. So Lisa. I meant to say Lisa's got a book on sale. It isn't entirely her own work. I mean, I'm not saying she's plagiarised several other people, but it's an anthology in which she's got some poems and uh, other pieces. And uh, it's five pounds, and all profits go to the Syria crisis appeal, so that's on sale. Um, I'm going to continue. I meant to say, by the way, you probably know this anyway, but all, all of the acts on tonight will be on again in the second half, so uh, uh, you haven't seen the last of us yet. Um, our next uh, performer, Paul McGrain, is um, well known around this particular building. He's the um, membership manager at the Poetry Society. He's also the uh, co-founder of Forest Poets in Walthamstow, and his poems have appeared uh, in anthologies and publications, including the South Bank Poetry, Morning Star, Templar Poetry Anthology, and the upcoming Penguin Anthology, The Poetry of Sex. Um, Paul is also uh, the very capable compare and organiser of Poetry at Three, which um, once, uh, once a month, the first, last Thursday? Yeah, first Thursday. First Thursday of every month. Mm -hmm. um, poetry at Three, as the name implies, is at three o'clock in the afternoon, open mic event, uh, which takes place here, and... Um, well worth getting along to, and it's always uh, pretty busy from my experience. So, anyway, let's welcome the man himself. Here he is, Paul McGrain. Yeah. 